Hi there, welcome back to the Kelner Chronicles episode 10. Uh, yeah, it's been an interesting week, but I haven't had a chance to sit down and do a video. When I did yesterday, my neighbour decided to start drilling, so I had to cancel everything. So I'm back today to go once again with, this, with the today's topic. But before we do, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers, all the new viewers, and anyone that uh, has watched the videos recently, Please like, subscribe and share for more content. Hopefully soon we'll be out and about and we'll get some more external content. But as of today, we're going to look at what the Philippine government recently did in the last few years, and that is their new slogan, it's more fun in the Philippines. And we asked the question, is it really more fun in the Philippines? To find out, hang on, we'll be back in a second. Bye. Okay, welcome back to the Kelma Chronicles. This episode obviously titled, Is It Really More Fun in the Philippines? To be honest with you, there is one very, very simple answer on this. Considering that there is 7,641 or so islands in the chain of the Philippines, it's a very, very simple answer to this. The answer is yes. From my perspective and others, because this information isn't just coming from me, yours truly, Perry. All right? This is also coming from friends, family members, and people that I know, colleagues and others that have actually been to the Philippines. Now, the interesting thing about this is you've got to consider some things. First of all, when the government pushed the story, or the Philippine government pushed the story of it's more fun in the Philippines, wasn't just to generate more tourism. I mean, every country does that. But it's a fact that they know that they can provide this fun. It all depends on what your taste is, okay? If you're the type of person who wants to just go and sit by a pool and drink a pina colada, then maybe it's not for you. You can do that anywhere. But if you're a person who likes adventure, travel, uh, and to see different things, natural and non-natural, if you want to see things that you've never seen before, then definitely it is more fun in the Philippines. Let's take a look at the situation. The amount of islands that there are encompasses a shed load of beaches, which you'll probably see a picture somewhere here, uh, that are, should we say, world-class. And some of them are even um, in those records. Taking into consideration places like Bohol, Palawan, Sikihor, uh, Boracay, and some beaches in Cebu, and other places. I've only mentioned the ones that spring to mind at the moment, but there are many, many more in the islands chain. And some are very secluded, so, you know, it's going to be amazing. You're looking at a shed load of fun okay and that's just on the beaches side i mean you can go to the sandbars which are in the middle of the sea you can get a boat to take you to the sandbar it doesn't cost much you can spend all day on the boat having your lunch going walking around on the sandbar swimming in the sandbar and it's the most beautiful thing ever however if beaches aren't your thing then there's island hopping you can go island to island either via plane, by ferry, or row row. If your row row is basically roll on, roll off ferry. If you've rented a motorcycle, if you've taken a truck, you can go on one of those. I mean, there should be a picture here somewhere of us on a row row going to Cebu. Cebu is also a beautiful island. In the, uh, in the island chain of the Philippines, there is so much you can do. There are places to visit, such as the Chocolate Hills in Bohol, or the Tarsiers. Tiny little marsupials, about yay big. Right? Big bug eyes, cute as anything. Small, and the only one of the only creatures that can turn its head 180 degrees, so it can check out any enemies coming behind it. That's just some of the things. There are also other beautiful places to go. And if you're smart, you'll even go to an island, and with a bunch of friends, and you can rent a minibus, cost you 
between the lot of you, you could take probably 10 people. Cost you just a couple of dollars or a couple of pounds each. For the day, the driver will be with you in an air-conditioned bus and drive you around the island that you're on for the whole day. And this can be arranged locally. You can either arrange it at the actual port area or via a hotel, concierge, or anyone, or just ask somebody there who knows someone. There's usually, that's usually the case. And you'll have a great day out. I mean, if you're more adventurous, there are volcanoes to explore. There are hot springs and waterfalls, abandoned, an abundance of waterfalls in the Philippines like you can't imagine, okay? There are areas to go fishing. You can go diving with whale sharks. You can go diving for wrecks. Apple Island's famous for it. Uh, there are so many, many things you can do. There's even sea turtles, you know, you go to Turtle Island and in the evening, if you wait and you're patient enough, after spending the day on the beach, the turtles will, will return to their home once you've left it and they'll go in to their beds, I suppose, and their nests. There is so much to see and do from zip lining to island hopping to water skiing and God knows, I mean, this, the list is endless. Now, I've had a colleague that she went over recently due to an unfortunate circumstance. She went with her friend and she got uh, a free trip. But it's like she said, it's the best trip she's ever had. She knew nothing about the Philippines. She approached me about it. I gave her some advice and some sites to jump on. A bit of a word of warning, you know, that when she reaches Manila, she's supposed to use grab taxis instead of the normal taxi. She won't be ripped off. She followed all the instructions and she had an even better holiday. And this is the reason I'm doing these videos. I'll soon be doing a video about uh, when you arrive in Manila, which should help you get about a lot safer, a lot cheaper and easier. But in general, there is so much more to explore. I mean, the country isn't just based on beaches or hotels. Okay, some hotels are great there, some hotels are not so great. If you're a backpacker, you're gonna have the time of your life. Now, it doesn't matter if you're young or just young at heart. If you want to explore, go and explore. Get out there, enjoy. I do, I do. I mean, you know, don't let the, don't let the uh, blonde hair fool you. <laughs> Uh, I get out and about, okay? It's something I love to do, especially on a Sunday. We'll just get out, we'll get the truck, wife will say, where are we gonna go? Anywhere, it doesn't matter. Right, a drive up the hills, a drive up the volcanic mountains, you know, island to island, whatever tickles at that time, I will go and do. And I will see something new and I will explore. For 11 years now, you'd have thought I would have had enough of the Philippines. But no, that's not the case. I absolutely love the place. And I don't think I've seen even a small portion of it. And I intend to see much, much more. Now, I cannot speak highly enough about the Philippines. I've talked in many other videos, you've probably noticed, about foods and likes and dislikes and cans and can'ts. I've done, I do my usual top 10. Well, I'll be doing one for arriving at Manila to help you out. The reason for doing these videos is because of COVID, we've all been locked down. Nobody knows what's going to happen next, but we hope and we pray, those that are religious, not the case, but those that want to, they hope and they pray that this will clear up so we can go back to our normal lives or some sort of normality and go back on holiday. And when this comes about, you'll have options. Yes, you could go to a cheaper Disneyland because they need the money. You can wait in queues for hours to get on a bloody ride. You can bore yourself to death doing that with the kids saying, Daddy, is it my turn now? Do I go on the play on the road now? Can I go? Uh, Dad, I don't want to wait. You know, the annoying thing. Whilst when you go to the Philippines, it's not so much the case. If you go to a resort, you pay your entry, you're there for the day. Okay? You can, I mean, it's so cheap, it's ridiculous. An entry into a beach resort will cost you a few couple of dollars at most or even a dollar once you're in there you can rent a little cabana and that'll cost you another couple of dollars for the day and the kids can go nuts on the slides and the rides and the waterfalls and everything that they're at you can have a barbecue you can set it up you know and it becomes a very cheap but yet a very effective day out 
You don't have to break the bank. You don't have to go commercial. Nothing says you have to, just that you choose to. But the Philippines has a different way, and it's something for you to take into consideration. At the end of the day, we're going to see a spate of deals and cheap deals going abroad, and perhaps your best choice might be somewhere like the Philippines. They are going to be in desperate need of rebooting their economy, especially via tourism, because right now the Philippines is suffering worse than most countries. Why? Because right now it's got 50 to 60% unemployment and a lot of it's down to COVID. People lost their jobs. So much so that whilst my wife was stuck locked down there and couldn't come home to Gibraltar, she actually helped a lot of people. But that's for another video, okay? That is because she chose to. But the point is, when you go back, when you start on your holidays and things go back to some sort of normality, maybe you should consider the Philippines. Maybe you should think to yourself, oh, maybe I'm going to get the best holiday of my life at a very, very cheap rate. So, that's all I've got to say. From my perspective, it is more fun in the Philippines. And though this is a very brief video, just to sort of give you an idea, have a look, go online, check up other people's uh, vlogs about the place there. I mean, don't listen so much to the some of the uh, expats. Some yes, some no, because some of them will give you the wrong impression of the Philippines. They'll give the impression from their standpoint where they sat in their house or their hotel throughout the whole time and did bugger all. But speak to those that actually explore the country, people that actually get about. Not that just sit in their house and do bugger all. Or sit in their hotel and sit by the pool. Yes, that's going to be boring and it's going to give a down in bad impression. That's not what you need to do. I'm not even going to tell you what you need to do. You know what you need to do. But what I think you should be looking at are those people and those vlogs or online videos of places you can visit. So just take my, uh, my bit of info and use it as best as you need. There are many, many more things to consider when you do travel, especially to the Philippines. And try to enjoy it because I'm sure that once you get out and about, all that cheap fruit, so fresh, straight off the tree, no pesticides, no GMOs, okay, and everything else that they put in this crap nowadays, you're going to have a blast. And stop looking at the negative side. Negative vlogs are from people who lead boring lives. Try to look at the positive vlogs. Enjoy it. You'll have, a, you'll have a blast. Okay, that's all I've got to say about that for now. From my perspective, it is more fun in the Philippines and from many others. But let's go move on quickly before we end the video and we're going to look at a couple of shout outs. First and foremost to my mate, Andy Omar. Okay, his uh, link in the description will be in the description box below. He'll give you the legal side and thing and pitfalls and things to watch out for and dodgy expats, etc., etc. He'll have it all there if you want, if you're thinking about moving there, he might be able to help. He knows a lot about the legislative issues there, which does help if you're trying to get all your paperwork sorted. And he knows how to get through certain difficulties, through certain loopholes, the legal way without having to go the hard way about it. He's someone to hook up with and check out. Now, on another one, if you want to look at the more family life sort of aspect of living in the Philippines or even just visiting, one of the best ones to look at, I would say, are the Rizzuto family vlogs. I don't know them personally, but I've watched a lot of their videos recently and have subscribed. Why? Because they live the way I like to live there. They live very, very simply but with a lot of fun. They'll go to visit places you wouldn't normally see on the tourist track. So it's worth checking out their vlogs as well. Uh, a big shout out to both um, Phil and Gladys, though you don't know me, you probably just know me from my comments. Little shout out to you guys there as well, and to little baby Donald, and to Tank the Dog. Big shout out to you guys, because your vlogs really are fresh and something everybody needs to watch out for if they do visit. 
love what you're doing love the house you're building think the world of you guys take care right from me that's about it for now uh, until the next one i've got a few more coming up this is uh, my usually shorter than what i normally do but it is i think essential that when things open up you may want to consider the philippines for your next holiday if you have any comments or questions please drop me a line in the comments section uh, like share and subscribe and one other thing I had a comment the other day from a gentleman uh, I think he's a subscriber who did point something out to me which is something I've been neglectful of and that is captions I will be adding captions to my vlogs I made that mistake at the start Duh. not again <laughs> all right so from my side I apologize there will be captions on every vlog from now on sorry hands up to that one and yeah i appreciate that comment and any more that you have coming along be negative if you choose be positive if you choose i'll try to answer as best i can and i'll always try to give you an honest answer okay from me perry at the kelner chronicles for this vlog i'm out of here thank you so much and goodbye <laughs>